Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 739, daily temperatures. Given an array of integers, temperatures, which represents the daily temperatures, return an array answer such that answers of i is the number of days you have to wait after the ith day to get a warmer temperature. If there is no future day for which this is possible, keep answer of i equal to zero instead. <laughs> So if we look at our example here, where we're given, you know, 73, 74, 75, 71, 69, 72, 76, 73, we should return 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0. Well, let's think about how they got this. <clears throat> so remember that, you know, the index i here is the amount of days for which, you know, the index in temperatures, you'd have to wait until you get a warmer temperature. So here, at the zeroth index, 73. So we'd have to wait one day to get to 74 in order to get a warmer temperature. So that's where the one comes from. Then the 74 would have to wait one day to get to the 75 for that warmer temperature. So that's where that one would come from. Then we're at 75. How long until we get to the next warmer temperature? Well, it's one day to 71, two days to 69, three days to 72, and then four days to 76. So that's where we get the four. And for the 2 of 71, it takes 1 day to 69 and then 1 day to 72. So that's 2 total. And we continue on. And we should note, you know, for the last one, it's going to be 0 because there's no element to the right of it. So we keep this one 0. And then also this 76 is 0 because the array ends before we can find a temperature that's warmer. So that's why it's 0. So the naive solution to this problem, which we won't implement because it's actually going to be very slow, is to simply, for each element in temperatures, search to the right of it and find how many steps it takes to find the next warmer temperature. So we'd start at 73 and then search to the, uh, to the right and then we'd you know, find, go until we find uh, a day that's warmer. And then for 74, we'd do the same, 75, do the same, and on and on and on. The problem with this solution is that it's going to be a big O of n squared, which we don't want to do because that's really slow. We want to ideally make use of information that we have so far, right? Because by going to 73 and going rightwards, you know, there's going to be some information captured that we could potentially reuse um, going forward. And we want to avoid having to do multiple iterations through our uh, array here. So let's think about what we might do to optimize our solution here. Okay. So we read the question prompt and we looked at an example, which we solved using the naive solution. But well, we said that this solution wasn't really the one we wanted to go with because it was going to be big O of n squared. And obviously that's a quadratic time solution. And we want to bring our time complexity down to big O of n if we can. And there is actually a solution to do that. And what we're going to use to solve this problem is a data structure called a monotonic stack. And if you don't know what monotonic means, it basically indicates that, you know, values are either increasing or decreasing, right? There's no like fluctuation, like it goes up, it goes down, kind of like a stock ticker. Uh, it's either going up or going down. And what it means for a monotonic stack is that, you know, starting from, I guess, the top of the stack going to the bottom, you know, either the values are increasing or decreasing. So in our stack, what we're gonna wanna do is actually um, use a monotonic stack except we want our values to constantly be decreasing. So the top of the stack will have the largest elements. And we're gonna see why that is in a second. So let's think about how we might solve this. And I don't think this solution is particularly intuitive. So how to derive this on your own without having seen it before, it's a bit tricky, but I think I'm more looking to just explain how we can use a monotonic stack here and then walk you through the algorithm step by step so you see how it's gonna work. Um, cool. So let's do this. So we're going to set up our stack here and we need to set up a solution array to basically store this output here. And remember, this is storing the number of days, uh, in the future for each index here in temperature that we have to wait until we get a higher temperature. So initially everything is going to be zero, uh, cause we haven't done any processing work and it looks like there's eight elements in here. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So we have eight. So what we want to do is we want to iterate over each index and value pair in temperatures from left to right. And what we're going to do 
is if we see a value in our stack, uh, sorry, if we have an index value that is actually greater than whatever's at the top of the stack, then we need to pop from the top of the stack and then calculate the difference in the days for the temperature that was at the top of the stack and our current day, which will tell us how many days it took for that previous element until we saw a larger uh, temperature. So that's a little bit confusing. So let's walk through the example. So the first index is going to be zero and we see the temperature 73. So obviously there's nothing to be processed in our stack because this is the first item that we've worked with. So we can't really do anything with the stack. We're simply going to add these values to the stack. So we're going to add the, a tuple with you know the index and the temperature that we saw at that index. Then we're going to continue. So now we're at index 1 and 74. And what we do now is we're going to check, OK, is 74 here greater than whatever the value at the top of the stack is at the kind of value position? And it is. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this element from the stack, because if we appended, you know, 174, remember, we want our stack to be monotonic, which means that it should be decreasing as we go. And obviously, this is not decreasing. This is increasing now. So we need to get rid of this element. So what we're going to do is, you know, we get rid of this element, but now we need to calculate the number of days it took between, you know, 73 and 74, because that's what the value for this zeroth index should be. And we can see the difference between one and zero is obviously going to be one. So this zero for the zero index changes to one. And now we still need to find a better temperature for one and 74. So we need to add it to the stack and continue through our list here. So we're going to get to now index two and the value is 75. And again, we're going to check is 75 greater than what we have at the top of the stack, this 74, right? which it is. So that means that we have to pop from our stack. And again, we're going to calculate the difference in the days. So this occurred at day two, the 75 and the 74 was at day one. Obviously, there's a one day difference between them to find that higher temperature. So this is going to now become a one. And again, we now need to find a higher temperature for 75. So we're going to add it to our stack and continue. So the next element we encounter is going to be at index three, and it's going to be the value 71. So 71 is actually not greater than 75, which means that we have not yet found a greater temperature than 75. So we can't process it just yet. So that means that we just have to add 3 and 71 to our stack, and then we will hopefully find something for this later. But now we need to worry about this one. So we continue through our array, and we get to index 4 and 69. So again, 69 is not greater than the top of the stack, 71. So what we need to do is just, you know, hope that we find something for these two later, but we still need to process 69 as the top of the stack. And notice how the values are decreasing, right? We said it's monotonic and we wanted it to be decreasing as we go down the stack. Obviously, this is the top of the stack here. So um, now what we need to do is, OK, we go now to index five and we get the value 72. Excellent. So. What we want to do is, oh, we notice that 72 is greater than 69. So that means that we can pop this from the stack. And again, we can do the difference between the days that 69 occurred at and 72. So obviously 72 is at day five and 69 was at day four. So for the fourth element here, we can see one. So zero, one, two, three, four. It should be one day, right? It only took one day for us to find that better temperature. Now. We also, with this 72, have found a better temperature for the next element in the stack, right? 69 is now gone, but 71 still needs to be processed. So because 71 is also greater than, you know, 72 is also greater than the 71, that means that we can simply, um, you know, get rid of it too. So we can pop it from the stack and remember that 71 occurred at day three. So for index three here, you know, the difference is going to be two. So zero, one, two, three. So this is now going to be two because it took two days from 71 to 72 to find that greater temperature. Cool. Now we can continue through our array. So now we're at day six and we have, you know, 76. So 76 is greater than 75. So that means that we can take the difference between the day that 76 occurred and the day 75 occurred, which is two, right? And we get the value four. So for the index two, so day two, it would take us four days um, to find a better temperature. So we calculate that and then we're going to add, you know, seven, uh, six and 76 to our stack. 
in hopes of finding a better temperature. Now we get to the seventh index and we get to 73. So obviously 73 is not greater than 76, which means that we have to just add it to the stack and hope we find something better. So we add it to the stack. And now notice that we actually went through the entirety of the array. At this point, we're done. What that means is we never found, um, about, oops, I think this one, I think I have an extra value here. This shouldn't be there. Uh, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, uh, I might have missed the value somewhere. Anyway, um, you guys get the gist. Yeah, I guess this should be one. I guess I did the wrong index anyway um yeah so this should be zero and this is zero as well because we never found a higher temperature for the 76 and we never found a higher temperature for the 73 so it makes sense that you know these are zero so that's the algorithm that we want to use essentially we're working with this stack and you know if the current element that we have at our iteration is greater than whatever the top of the stack is we need to pop that element from the top of the stack and then take the difference between the day that we're currently processing and the day that we just popped from the stack and then increment you know the count here in the actual result array and do that for a while you know the our current uh temperature is greater than whatever's at the top of the stack there could be multiple days that uh could be affected by this one day so we want to just keep going until the stack is either empty or we get to a point where our current temperature is no longer greater than whatever is at the top of the stack so that's the algorithm that we want to use and that's how we're going to use the monotonic stack here hopefully it makes sense i think once you see the code which is quite compact and neat it should make a little bit more sense and you can kind of put two and two together if not you can also work through the example again once you've seen the code and understand how it works so you can build it out yourself and get that knowledge um cool let's go to the code editor and actually write okay. the code welcome back to the editor now it's time to write the code for this problem the first thing that we want to do is set up our monotonic stack. So this is just going to be an empty stack in the beginning. So we're going to say stack equals an empty list. And we need to set up our result array. Remember to store the you know days that it's going to take for each uh, temperature to find a higher temperature. So we're going to say res is going to be, remember we're initializing it to zeros for all the positions times the length of temperature. So that will create um, a result array which is the same length as our temperatures except every element will be initialized to zero to start with so remember that we need to iterate over the pairs of the day uh, number and the temperature um, in our temperatures right so we're gonna say for current day current temperature in enumerate temperatures um, what we want to do now is we wanted to remember we need to process from the stack while this current temperature is greater than you know the temperature at the top of the stack so we're gonna say while stack because remember we can't pop from a stack that's empty uh, nor can we access an element um, in the stack if it, there's no elements in there so while the stack is has at least one element and the current temperature remember is greater than the stack minus one one which remember we're storing the in our stack we're going to be storing you know the day number like so like a zero and then you know in this case it would be like 73 so that's why we ex access the um, first index there and then obviously minus one that's going to be the top of the stack so while you know that's true what we wanted to do is we wanted to say that the previous day and the previous temperature is going to be equal to stack.pop so we're going to pop from the stack and then remember that we need to increment the count of the number of days for the previous day by the diff, um, you know, the difference between the current day and the previous day in terms of days. So we're going to say res for the previous day. So that's how many days it took is going to be the difference between the current day and the previous day. Cool. Now what we need to do once we've gotten rid of all the temperatures that are smaller than our current temperature and we also took care of you know setting their values for that previous day value what we need to do is simply append our current temperature to the stack because it needs to be processed right we need to find it a better time or sorry a better temperature in the future uh, so we're going to add it to the stack for processing so we're going to add the current day and the current temperature to the stack and we're going to do this for all current day and current temperature combinations so we can simply at the end return result here and we will have solved this problem so let's submit it double check that we haven't made any bugs 
and let's see okay cool so our solution works let's think about the time and space complexity here so for the time complexity we have to go from left to right over temperatures so this you know the time complexity is going to be dependent on how large temperatures is which is just going to be big o of n and then for the actual space complexity well we define a result here which is the same length as temperatures so the size of this result array will be dependent on how large temperatures is so we can think of our space complexity as just being big o of n where n is the number of elements in temperatures um yeah, so that's gonna be how you solve this problem, daily temperatures. It is a bit of a weird one. If you've never seen a monotonic stack before, it can be quite hard to figure out. Even if you see the solution, you know, just posted somewhere on the internet, it's kind of hard to get how it works. Um, so sometimes it's nice to have these videos to just explain it to you line by line, uh, which is what I'm doing here. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's any topics, videos uh, that you'd like me to cover, please comment in the you know, comment section below. Let me know what you want to see, and I'll be happy to make those videos for you guys. Otherwise, have a nice day. Happy Elite Coding, and bye.